Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Trophy Room. Before we start the show and have fun and talk about PlayStation, a bit of a trigger warning. We're going to be talking about some real world events that happened right before recording the show that we felt compelled to talk about. So if you don't want any of that real world stuff, I'll link in the description to skip ahead and get to hear us talk about PlayStation. So with all that said, with all that out of the way, everybody, love you all very much. Let's start the show. Wait, no longer greatness has arrived. Welcome to the Trophy Room, a PlayStation podcast made by the players for the players. I'm your host, Joseph, a.k.a. Mr. Badbit, and it is here where me and my best friend Kyle talk about the latest, the greatest in all things PlayStation. Of course, you can listen to the show wherever you find your podcasts and on YouTube at the Trophy Room Show. And if you like what you hear, please consider dropping us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. You can plop us a follow on Spotify, or if you really, really like us, you can toss a buck our way over at patreon.com slash ps trophy room so with all that said and with all that out of the way the greatest co-host whoever is whoever will be mr kyle stevenson we're gonna do something a little different today yeah gonna open the but show guess what we're both not doing too great not doing well um no seeing a lot of of our friends who are parents um who do podcasts like our good friend sean capri going i feel guilty recording a podcast right now um, because of what has happened in, uh, Uvalde, Texas. And, you know, I saw a lot of people in our community hurting publicly and I thought what better way than opening the show, acknowledging that pain, acknowledging that hurt, letting you all know that it's okay to feel the feelings that you're feeling. Um, and to identify the real problem. Mm-hmm. Um, not a political stance, it's a human stance. Yeah. And um human lives I are way more important yeah. than anything else. I, I thought of you, Kyle. Uh, yeah, I yeah, I, I, I thought of you know your beautiful nieces and nephew. And um I just immediately thought of you. Mm-hmm. I love you, buddy. I love you too. <sighs> I mean <clears throat> Likewise, I uh, I instantly thought, obviously, of the girls and of my nephew. Then I thought of, oh my god, <laughs> sorry, y'all. This is gonna be a, this is gonna be this is gonna be rough. Um, I thought of every single kid I've ever taught. I thought of every single kid that I've had at summer camp. I've thought of every single kid that is in our community with. Awesome parents like Marcus O'Neill and Tim Olf. Catherine, yep. Sean Capri, so many others. Jedi Master Ren, like there's there's so many amazing parents in here, and I thought of their children. <sighs> Schools should be a safe zone. Yep. Where kids go to learn to get away from bad situations, if that is what they their home life is. Most kids go to school. So they can actually eat for the day and have food and, and shelter. They shouldn't have to fucking go to school and worry about some lunatic shooting them. Yeah. End of story. It, it's it's wild that this is now, I think, normal. if I read correctly. Well, not just normal, but I, there was a number I read earlier. It's like in the hundreds of school shootings already this year. And we're in May. Yeah. And th- this also goes to uh, what, last weekend, the horrific shooting in Buffalo, where the, the, black, the wonderful black community in Buffalo lost many members. The, uh, I believe it was a Taiwanese church in California also had an attack on them. This shit is crazy. It needs to stop. And there's one common denominator amongst them all. Guns have no business being in anyone's hands at this point. The fact that this says we as a country are still sitting by as these beautiful young children lose their lives. There are 19 families that should have woken up this morning 
and gave a kiss to those kids on their head and sent them on the bus. But you know what? Those families are going through hell right now because some lunatic bought an AR and went to school and just mercilessly shot at them. Yeah. And let alone the teachers who, who laid their life on the line, who also Protect lost their lives kids. to this awful. It's just like it needs. I can't go through this anymore, Joe. I can't. It's, yeah. It hurts way too and much, I'm, man. I'm so fucking tired of people blaming video games. Same. People blaming mental health and then just not doing anything about mental health. Um, like, and, and I'm going to be real. I'm a gun owner. And it's too easy. And I live in a state that is hard to get, quote unquote. Way too easy. I am for whatever thing happens. Go for it. N- this should never happen. This should just never happen, ever. Only country that where this this happens on the regular. And we blame violent video games. We blame PlayStation. We blame our Xboxes. I think the, uh, I think the problem is right there in front of you. So, mm-hmm. again, Kyle, you said it perfectly. And now I have nothing but anger because, oh, um, something needs to be done. Stop blaming video games. Get to work. Uh, I've seen some of my most conservative friends even go, listen, come on. Enough is enough. This is, this has got to stop. So again, everybody, I know it's a really serious way to open the show, but um, in solidarity with y'all, we love y'all. Please, Very please, much. please, please stay safe. Hug your loved one, hug your kids um, yes. and hold the people accountable. Stop blaming video games, Fox News. You know, you're the ones doing it. All right. And not a quick hug either. Like yeah. a nice, yeah. long, long hug f- f- for us, please. Yeah. Please. Yeah. With that, now Ooh. it's time to get that escapism in. Um, <sighs> okay. It's time. Now I'm ready to yell about PlayStation Classic. Games. Exactly. It's time to yell about PlayStation Classic. We're going to be talking about how TCL has apparently leaked out that there's going to be a new PlayStation 5 Pro and Xbox coming in sometime in 2023, 2024. Is it real? Is it fake? Is TLC just speaking out of the butts? We're going to be talking about that. We are going to be talking about how trophy support comes to PlayStation Plus Premium uh, and, uh, sorry, Premium Classic Games. And we're going to be talking about how Sony has blamed a technical error on a very controversial what could have been PlayStation Plus policy. Jeff Keighley talks about being less third-party uh, events this year and what that may mean for PlayStation this summer. And of course, we got a bevy of breaking news that just broke as of recording the show. So I don't even know what's happening in the later half. That's for Kyle <laughs> to talk me That's through. Me. <laughs> With that, I know we just had a serious talk, so I don't want to show Patreon um because I think that money could go elsewhere this week. Love y'all. Uh, but I do want to thank our uh, producers over at Patreon. I want to thank our newest member, uh, Millennial Falcon Gaming at the Silver Plus tier. Platinum tier. I want to thank Todd Burowitz and Toxic. I want to thank our gold members too soon. Gavin Gottfried, Jose Jimenez, Jedi Master Ren, Metal Kirby, Awesome Dave, Robbie Bobby Miller, and Strubles and Bits. I want to thank our Silver Plus members. Hide in doors. Naka Chaka. Marcus O'Neill, JB the Purple Monkey, Jardis Vaughn Metal, Tim Ulf, Justin Rodriguez, Cypher Primus, Captain Logan, Brenton Zachary, K. Grimm, Rick Arrington, Dewani Raksha, The Good Sir, Mr. and Mrs. Nasty Boots, Drellish, Foolish Fuji, Any Day Now, Kevin Mitchell, Kevin Diaz, Manx Vizia, The Lord Commander Corgi, Elo 2032, Stephen Flesh, Jinx the 23rd, Bubble Boy N7, Jesse Garcia, Hambone, and the Aztec Th- King. Thank you all so much for supporting us the way you do over at patreon.com and again we love you all very much and we could not do the show without you guys that said kyle i feel like it is time it is time to square up the news first bit of news that needs to be squared up it's coming from george yang over at ign tcl 
apparently thinks PS5 Pro and new Xbox are coming in 2023 slash 2024. Electronics company TCL attended a conference in Poland and in a presentation said that it expects, expects a quote unquote PS5 Pro and quote unquote new Xbox Series X slash S to arrive sometime between 2023 and 24. According to Polish outlet PPE, TCL's presentation showed the timeline of consoles starting with the PS4 and Xbox One in 2013, and then the release of the PS4 Pro and Xbox One X a few years later. The presentation also marks the launch of the ninth generation of consoles, with PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S in 2020. At the end of the slide, it lists the PS5 Pro and new Xbox Series X and S. T TCL claims that these consoles will provide 60 to 120 FPS resolution at 4K, as well as have the ability to display 8K. Apparently, they will also utilize AMD Radeon RX 7700 XD technology. Ooh wee. This situation is potentially just a guess from TCL, as the pattern for mid-generation refreshes seem to happen about three to four years after the base console's launch. The biggest argument against the existence of upgraded consoles is the rampant supply issues and chip shortages that are plaguing the current stock PS5 and Xbox Series X and S. Manufacturers are still having trouble meeting the demand for launch consoles, which could make mid-cycle refreshes both difficult and unneeded at this stage. Now, that's a great pair of insight right there um of of looking at why this maybe doesn't make sense but at the same exact time on stage of the tcl event the showcase for for their stakeholders it is weird how kind of specific like tech that they're really using in mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. that being said jeff grubb writes uh, on twitter again uh coward of the show he won't come on i don't know why you know i, I sent him emails we talk and he's just like you know what joe go to hell you have to earn it i go you know what jeff fair <laughs> he says ps5 is going to get a uh, six nanometer refresh soon better yields could use even less cooling all those gains will go into improving manufacturing and save costs maybe a hardware redesign is part of that but i don't think there's any chance of a pro any time soon now that's jeff grubb and you know what jeff grubb don't know crap kyle all right i'm here to tell you that right jeff, that's cake. all joe i would welcome you on the show anytime joe. absolutely same uh but kyle <laughs> do you think just right there do you think it's like too, way too soon i mean just to talk about how hard it is to find a playstation 5 right now. yeah yeah it i can see it both ways yeah. i can see it the history of yeah there has been redesigns or you know a new model number every three or four years in past generations like yeah. there were two ps2 versions if i'm not mistaken oh dude there were yeah i think there I mean, there were a couple but they were pretty close to each other yeah, yeah. Uh, like every generation has those and it's it's naive for us to think that it's not going to happen to ps5 and, and series x and s uh it the thing is, it feels like it's too soon because of the shortages yeah. and how hard it is for people to just to get one. Ooh. So the so just thinking of getting a brand new pro version is wild. If you can't even put out the regular one, how are you going to produce a pro version? Unless yeah. they really go to the drawing board and find something else that isn't in a shortage, but that's like, <laughs> that's like Willy Wonka magic talk, just plucking it out of thin air. Well, I think what Jeff Grubb says, I think kind of lends to your way of thinking. Like, so that six nanometer chip means just the board itself is going to be shrunken down. It's going to be using less silicon, which means that they get to make more of them. So you're fitting more chips on what is effectively a giant plate so that you could produce more PlayStation 5s. And I think that is what is the true reality of the situation is I think we are going to get a PlayStation 5 Pro. I think that is yeah. an inevitability, especially... I can't wait to see what it looks like, honestly. <laughs> it's even bigger. <laughs> it's just two PS5s duct taped <laughs> on it, top it, of each it's, other. It's the flaps... Yeah, and you oh for the disc version, yeah. you put the disc in the middle, but there's nothing in the middle. It just floats in midair and spins. Oh, oh, okay. I yeah, thought you were gonna get sexual space. With this reference. No, no, absolutely. There's no buttons to rubber. 
hit or anything. Uh-uh. No, they got to no stimulate the PS5 first yeah, before you exactly. just put the disc in like that. What is this, amateur hour shit? That's um, part of the premium uh, PS Plus steer. <laughs> <laughs> and there's like haptic feedback. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're 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 thinking ahead of it. Like we're PSVR two is single card, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think you're uh, Jeff Bezos call us. I think we're on to something. <laughs> um but no, I, I, I think you're right. I think there's gonna be a redesign more than anything because with this smaller board, that means you need less like um like smaller heat sinks and smaller components that can come inside of it. So who so that just means that cheaper parts, you're going to be able to make this PlayStation 5 more cost effective in, in the in the outset. So to me, by using less materials, of course, you're going to cut down costs. But it also means that this thing has to be redesigned. And I don't think, Kyle, that would be the worst thing in the world. I personally love the way it looks. It's different. I guarantee it. <laughs> I definitely feel like that's the redesign that they're talking about. I just, I, I, I'm not going to like hush, hush a, a, a PlayStation 5 Pro. I just don't even feel like it's needed right now because there is, we're still in that lull of, you know, first party AAA games. Um, mm-hmm. So like by the time this thing comes out, I feel like that's when we're finally starting to hit the, I think the crescendo that PlayStation and Xbox wanted to hit on the uh, uh, on the get so mm-hmm. to me that's what i'm kind of thinking here when it comes to the refresh um do you also want, I, I, I just yeah, go for i it. just feel like the i feel like our tvs are already good enough for a, like i i what else the 8k i saw in the graphic yeah. right or like we are already getting 4k stuff Depending on the game, obviously there's. Obviously. I'm not. I don't know the technical jargon. I know some <laughs> games do, some games don't. Yeah, but like we could live with that. I, I don't. I, I don't know we're why barely, we would need. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're barely. I'm sorry, we're barely hitting that 4K at 30, and exactly. you're just like 4K 60. Let's go or 8K yeah. 8K 30. Mm-hmm. Let's do this. It's like yeah. there's no Blu-ray needed to make a ju- this jump. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, there's no blue, there's no g- gimmick to mm-hmm. make a jump that need need for a need for the pro. Yeah, like the PS4 Pro, I think that had a 4K drive in it, right? No, it didn't. PS5 did. PS. No, PS4 had did a the pro drive. did the pro. Yeah, but did it have able oh, to play 4K? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. can't remember or not. Yeah, yeah, pro, 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 pro. Okay, you're right. You're totally right. Yeah. Uh, so for for me, I, I I think you're you're also right there again. Like, how many 8K displays are out in the wild right now? How many will there be in five years? I bet more, but not yeah. to the extent that warrants a 8K console. I think that would be just ridiculous. I think that is the next. You know, I think at like year eight, year nine, maybe year ten, then we could start thinking about that when the software and the hardware have kind of. Um, meshed well together uh, or kind of complemented each other to the, to the, to the highest of their abilities. Then yeah. I think we can start talking about AK, but like, we're still doing like, we're still going through the little load glitches of like, you know, going into the elevator and going up levels, you know, that type yes. of thing, hide it or, or trying to go through crevices in caves to kind of get to the next area type of hidden load and screens. Apparently in Samniac are the only ones that can figure out ray tracing and 4k in the same thing. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, there's still so many things that we, that I think devs haven't cracked with the hardware yet that, lends itself to yeah this can wait a few more years until we can actually push this hardware to its limit to warrant a a pro model i just i don't see that i don't see displays being there yet i i I don't see anybody really wanting this i think what people really want more than anything is just 4k 60 4k 120 i think that's way more important than anything 8k that's all i got to say about that Agreed. And hot uh-huh. take: yeah. games are already beautiful. Yeah. I, 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 I've, I've already said this before in the show. I don't know how in future generations of video game consoles, what are they going to iterate on to make a actual visual difference? Yeah. Like, are we going to just get play games that just look like CG trailers the entire time? I mean, I've I seen the know. Halo show. We're coming close. 
<laughs> dig, <laughs> dig. That show doesn't look great. No, I, yeah, it, it, it comes to that uncanny valley. It's like, exactly. when will this become a little bit too close to home? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely, absolutely. So, okay, so we both think T, uh, TCL is TCL. kind of uh, drinking the Kool-Aid a bit. But, you know, Maybe. I'm willing to drink the Kool-Aid on. Ooh, what? Trophy support for classic games, Kyle. It's happening. It's Rebecca happening. Smith over at PS Lifestyle writes, trophy support for PS Plus premium classic games is optional for developers. The new PS Plus tiers have launched in Asia, so Sony has answered a few of those burning questions players may have had about changes to PlayStation Plus. One of those questions to be answered was whether all of the classic PS Plus PlayStation, PSP, and PS2 games will have trophies. Some may be... Some may be disappointed to find the answer is no, because adding trophies to these titles is optional for the developers. PS Plus classic games like Ape Escape, Hot Shots Golf, Intelligent Cube, Siphon Filter, and Wild Arms all have trophy support. Their trophy lists were revealed earlier today, but nothing had been confirmed as to whether any of the other classic games would have trophies too. In a guide to the all-new PlayStation Plus service, Sony confirmed that, quote, this feature is optional for developers. Hmm. This means that the other PS classic games that have been released in Asia will not have trophy support. These are Disney, Pixar, Toy Story 2, Buzz Lightyear to the Rescue, Echo Chrome, Jumping Flash, Mr. Driller, Oddworld Abe's Odyssey, Tekken 2, Worms Armageddon, and Worms Worms. World Party. Sony also confirmed the service would launch with 700 games across all three tiers. Interestingly, the list from Malaysia and Korea only includes just over 340 games, and that's if you count the PS4 and PS5 versions of a game as separate titles and include the time trials in the list. This means the list of games is only going to get bigger by the time the service arrives in the Americas on June 13th and Europe on June 23rd. In other news, some PS Plus classic games are based on the PAL 50 Hertz versions of the Yikes. title instead of the NTSC 60 Hertz version. Elsewhere, tomorrow's Assassin's Creed Valhalla update will add an armory and custom loadouts. Ooh, we, I don't know what that had to do about anything. I, I, don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know why I did not cut that portion out. <laughs> It's fine. Here's Again, I'm like Ron Burgundy. You put it in the <laughs> in the run of the show. I'm gonna read it. <laughs> Go <laughs> self trophy room audience. <laughs> I love you guys. All right. Also, update: Dino Crisis Art appears on the Hong Kong uh, PSN, hinting at a PlayStation Plus inclusion. Yeah, buddy. Most of this news is fantastic, Kyle. Yes. How many months? How many at this point years, man? It feels like forever. We've seen the blueprint. We've seen the future. We knew this was coming. We've been chanting chanting it. You just yelling from the rooftops when Back this, when we first heard the word Gaikai. Gaikai streaming. <laughs> exactly. It's it's been there. It's been in the ether. And when PlayStation Plus or the new PlayStation Plus was revealed, it was where is it? We're missing yeah. this. Do, uh, real talk, do you think they kind of missed a little momentum by not announcing this right off the bat? I can see both ways. Oh, yeah, I, can so? see, I, I can see it like in a multi-stage process, like you, you announce the games and then, yeah, guess what? Trophies. Like when I when I Fair saw enough. that Sony Ben thing with the siphon filter, I was like, oh, man, that gave me goosebumps because yeah. that is exciting. That is A, those, those blueprint things were real the yeah. copyright whatever it was and and two as a trophy hunter i am so excited to show my love and appreciation for these old games that i grew up with by getting the trophies just mm. like you do with with the the games that you you're platinum you platinum them if you truly love the game like i'm a little more lenient on what i platinum <laughs> but i still platinum lenient. games because <laughs> i know that's putting it lightly uh i i mean trophies and games are a huge seller for me so yeah, yeah I'll, I'll go back and play these games if they have trophies absolutely well here's a i mean great point that leads into this even better question the green gorilla uh, gamer writes in just like you can too if you add us at ps trophy room or you join the trophy room discord server the link works now everyone the link works and if it does it at me at mr bad bit and punch my face that said gorilla <laughs> writes uh kyle are you going to play and plat all these PlayStation classics? How excited are you for this, man? All is... It's a lot. Yeah. I'm already so far behind on games that released this year. <laughs> um, Fair enough. I want to. Okay. 
I, I have to see if the trophy lists are doable. That's the thing. So I don't believe any of like the trophy lists have been revealed yet. I think maybe some of them have. Yeah. Yay and nay. Like when I take a look at like Wild Arms, like that game is a 20 to 30 hour game. Yeah, that's an RPG. That's a JRPG. Yeah. So like that's a meaty game right off the bat. I don't know if I could plat that, but I would like to give it a try for sure. Yeah. But um, games like Ape yeah. Escape and, and Siphon Filter for sure. Yeah. I want to because those are so tied to PlayStation and its history for me. Mm-hmm. So I definitely want to get those two. But games like Intelligent Cube, which I've never played. I'm not going to be excited to sit down and, and attempt right. to platinum that game. Yeah, and the one thing that is a, is a bummer out of all this news is the PAL versions, which kind of, and if y'all don't know, the PAL versions run at 50 hertz compared to 60 hertz, which means they run less well, noticeably slower and choppier than uh, the North American versions. I forget the reason as to why it's that way. It, yeah. it's, it's, I think maybe there's like some weird european regulation nonetheless isn't that's that a also the reason why that all-in-one playstation classic system yeah. was a Sucked. bummer because yeah. they had that those versions absolutely so yeah it, that is a bummer but it kind of t- shows to me that you know we you we've heard very crazy stories of like there are copies of games that just don't exist anymore like square like lost one of the final fantasies just to yeah. To, just to like a random flood in the office one day. Uh, like someone left the sink on and just, <laughs> and yeah. just f- all the servers. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like that kind of goes to show that this might be the reason some of those games are lost to the to the ether, which is a bummer because I would think you'd learn by now that these ROMs don't cut it. But that mm. is the bummer. Again, and, and some, not all of them, are the PAL versions which again to me lends credence to some of these games this may be the only version that they have mm. that said drellish writes in and he wants me to talk in a british accent oh all right everybody gets one <clears throat> oh uh, good afternoon there gentlemen oh this is relish from the daily telegraph <laughs> shut up I'm, I'm doing this Kyle. stop you can't tell me i'm i'm i'm, I'm committed uh during the prenuptial tea day, uh, I was asking myself a question. Oh, what underrated game, gentlemen? Uh, are you dead set on playing and completing from uh, the PlayStation Classic lineup? Uh, now that it has a last trophy support, I eagerly expect your answer at your earliest convenience. Yours truly, Sir Jealous Silverlock. I changed that accent. You so did. many times. I, I was expect you sounded a little bit like Sir Hammerlock from Borderlands Three, <laughs> a little bit here and there. Moment. I am so sorry. All of a sudden, we've dropped from the, Brit- the British charts. <laughs> oh, My apologies, sorry, y'all. Drellish really did us in. What is a what is an underrated game that we're dead set on playing and completing for the PlayStation Classic lineup? I mean, I feel like both of us are probably eyeing the same game. Hmm. That's siphon filter. That's siphon filter. I mean, it's not underrated because it's amazing. It's not, but the I mean, for you, I, I know you you played the actual game. For me, that was a demo I played on a demo disc a million <laughs> times over and over. That subway level is so ingrained in my brain. Yep. Yep. I'm just and I actually never beat that game. Oh, I God. bought it after the demos, but I never beat it. Th- that's I, why I'm so excited because I've I've said this all the time during the podcast it's like this is i think my the guilty like absent like part of my gaming history because playstation one came out i was five years old (laughs) maybe even less so like i couldn't go out there and buy wild arms but now that it is available to me yeah yeah i'm actually really excited to, to to play that game because i've heard so much about it like dino crisis Dino oh, Crisis yeah. is, a, is a game, Kyle, real talk, mono do mono, all right? I haven't even seen a screenshot. It's it's never, it, it was never on my radar as a kid, um, and, which is crazy to me because I love Jurassic Park. Mm-hmm. That is a game that I, I am excited to go in absolutely not knowing a goddamn thing because I know how beloved this game is for so many people and me mm-hmm. kind of getting to experience it like, you know, like I would have in the 90s, that that really excites me. Yeah. 
I, yeah, I, I'm I'm very excited to see what's not here. Yeah, and what we are again. Like, yeah, the Dino Crisis image pop it up. What else are they holding back? Am I? Is this going to be the only way that I'm going to be able to play Star Ocean: The Second Story on my PlayStation Five? Because it might be. It, You've heard it before. It's the only Star Ocean game that I can't play on my PS5 right now. Yeah. It's the best one in the series. I don't know what they're doing, <laughs> but this might be the only reason, the only way for me to get to play what is one of my favorite games of all time. Of all time. Yeah. And I'm excited for that possibility of what is still coming. Well, like the it, like the God of War PSP games and whatnot. Like there's oh my so, God, yes. There's so many, so many gems. I, yeah. I'm very excited. And I and I could guarantee that you're going to see probably most, if not all, first party games have trophy support, and yeah. third party games kind of get to pick and choose which. Mm-hmm. I'm fine with because I have, yeah, I have no idea if you put a trophy in a game, it's gonna break it. You know, <laughs> it's it's really nice to to have that be there and not be an obstacle for developers or or publishers and have people just experience it. So to me, I, I, I I love the trophy inclusion. I love that. It's also optional. Um, That said, Ancy Pantsy writes in uh, what a great name. They ask just seeing the dino crisis has been given the green light on PlayStation plus platinum extra premium plus (laughs) plus. (laughs) <laughs> I know that's naming convention so bad. It was right in front of you, PlayStation. It was right in front of you. Uh, do you think Sony will use these releases as indicators to what franchises they should be that should be revived? Going from what you've seen so far, what games from the lineup would you like to see given that makeover treatment? I mean, uh. broken record here, but I I definitely think this is a game that they are reviving because. I think the way that they've flaunted this game to be the first game on the lineup, I, 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 I think we're getting a silent. I'm uh, sorry, a silent hill, a <laughs> siphon filter, filter. Um, yeah, you know, game Remake. for sure. Yeah, like I, I, yeah. I, I think it's it's a, yeah, I would think it's a it's a ground up remake from the get. It's gonna bring people that love the original games in. And it's going to get the most of the audience who's never played these games in as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I I do think that would be a way for them to gain interest, and that I think that I think that will tell me if that is true. If Legend of Dragoon is one of those classics, fair. And and and, and like in the next, let's say. I don't know, August, September. We're here on the show talking about how many times these games have been downloaded and played. Yeah. And then get a good gauge of how people are digging the way this PS Plus thing is. Are people actually going back and playing these old games? Because if they don't, and it's just like a a filler thing for a lot of PlayStation Plus users, then they're probably not going to go back to the drawing board and, and remake any of these games and stuff. Hard edit for the show, a hard break. While you were talking, Kyle, I was yeah. hearing Chris Hansen's voice. Oh, no. And I was like, what the hell is going on? Why is Chris Hansen at my house? Yeah, why? I am exactly. worried. <laughs> and oh, jeez. My mom's like watching Murder Mysteries on uh, okay. literally, guess, guess the volume, Kyle. Oh, 55. That would be generous. 100. <laughs> <laughs> she's i walk in i'm like ma this is like insanely loud she's like i have the fan on <laughs> you know what you should buy your mom for christmas a uh, pair of headphones for the tv no she'll break them and lose them <laughs> i love her to death that 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 being said though kyle i would want siphon filter come back but i would also like wild arms because i know that that game is so beloved to so many people I think that would only mm-hmm. make sense. I I've never played it, mm-hmm. so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna throw stones at it. I'd be a I'd be a little bummed if that got the remake treatment before Legend of Dragoon, if I'm being fair. totally honest. No, that's fair. And I do like the idea of like them going, hey, maybe Dino Crisis is a thing we could revive, and we don't need to do this weird futuristic, you know, uh class based uh, a multiplayer game and Capcom mm-hmm. could go, you know what? Maybe we could just 
put out a remake to to Dino Crisis and actually see yeah. further if there's there's something here. I I like that idea a lot because you see that a lot in streaming services. Like mm-hmm. Moon Knight was a limited series, but now because it's so popular, they're like, well, maybe it's not. Maybe we'll see mm-hmm. Moon Knight somewhere mm-hmm. else. You know, yeah. those type of things. The possibilities are are endless. So awesome to see PlayStation trophies being added to classic games. This is really exciting. I, I'm seeing the lineup has me excited to finally experience so much of that 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 guilty, you know, void that I have in my mm-hmm. PlayStation uh, uh, knowledge. So this is yeah. this is awesome for me. I, I can't wait. Can I can I float another free idea to Sony if they're Please. listening? Yeah. Let's just say we get around the time. It's winter. It's mm-hmm. chilly, right? It's snowing outside. Yeah. And you turn on ESPN, and what's on? The X Games. Oh, boy. What if that month they theme the PlayStation Classics around the Winter X Games and give us games such as Cool Borders or oh, wow. strike a deal with EA mm-hmm. and bring us SSX <laughs> PS2 Classics, Joe? Yes. This I- might be the way we get them back. <laughs> This might be. Again, I mean, I, if we, if they talk to Disney and yeah. got Toy Story two yeah. as part of the PlayStation Classics, anything's possible. Which is a weird get. Let's be honest. It was, it's a weird a get. Weird... I'm excited. That game's yeah. pretty good, but it's a weird get. Yeah, it's also awesome to see that like they're also putting like CT filters in the games if you want that true nostalgic feel to it. You know, you yeah. get your custom saves. You get like rewind features. Like they're putting a lot of effort. Surprisingly into these games so i'm i'm really excited to see when this finally rolls out to uh north america what we're going to be getting that said kyle we're what two weeks away three weeks away yes i believe so right yeah i I can't i can't do top three you know what math's hard i don't even want to do it anymore two (laughs) yeah about two and a half there you go. We solved it. Right in the middle. <laughs> I want to talk about a technical error that maybe we just did with our mathematics, but yeah. also on Sony's side <laughs> with yeah. PlayStation users. Take it away, Kyle. Tom Ivan over at VGC writes, Sony blames technical error for PS Plus users charged to upgrade discounted subscriptions. The company's revamped PlayStation Plus service began rolling out in Asia this week with some unwelcome surprises for many consu- customers. Chief among the complaints leveled at Sony was that users who had previously purchased PlayStation Plus subscriptions at a discounted price were being charged extra to upgrade to a different service tier, wiping out savings they originally made buying reduced cost memberships. Sony has been heavily criticized for a lack of communication on the subject since the revamped PS Plus service began rolling out earlier this week. On Wednesday, it publicly acknowledged the problem, and while stopping short of apologizing for the issue, it thanked users for their patience while the company addressed it. Quote, Due to a technical error, players in Asia who have previously purchased a PlayStation Plus membership at a discount have been incorrectly charged for their upgrade pricing, Sony claimed. This error has been fixed, and impacted players will receive a credit. We thank you for your patience. Earlier on Wednesday, an alleged email from Sony's Hong Kong support team was circulated online, claiming to show and acknowledging the the charges as an official policy. If accurate, the email could suggest that SIE had actually walked back on the policy following criticism, or that its Hong Kong support team was unaware of the error. Oh, uh, boy. This Listen, this added heat to the fire, or or whatever. Uh, This... this this got just more confusing. I put out a tweet. Yeah, you did. I saw and, it. Uh, it's 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 just it was unacceptable. Like yeah. just because you bought a PlayStation, and this is a, if you're confused by this, I'm, I'm walking with you here. Let's hold hands. Let's let's guide each other here. Um, if you bought theoretically prior to this, we done screwed up, gang. This is on our end. This is not happening. Prior to this announcement by Sony, if you bought a PlayStation Plus card uh, on discount uh, and you wanted to upgrade your tiers, it would charge you for the new upgrade plus the money you would have saved on that that 
discount. So it's charging you like, let's just say you got PlayStation Plus a year for you know thirty bucks uh, instead of sixty. It would charge you when upgrading the extra thirty bucks to upgrade, which is so if you if ridiculous. you stacked, it'd be multiple thirty dollar charges on top of it. Absolutely, which is again out. Outrageous very and very scary <laughs> and shady and penny pitching and absolutely just, just not a great look. Now the muffin mon writes in and he actually this question it was actually prior to PlayStation addressing it, but I, I feel like it still fits. So let's let's try it out. Hi guys, Kevin here. Hello, Kevin. Uh, regarding PlayStation Plus upgrades, it seems like there was a lot of people misinterpreting Nibel's tweet yesterday in regards to upgrades. Do you think PlayStation social media needs to do a better job at monitoring the discourse and putting out quick clarifications to avoid situations in the future? Yes. Absolutely, yes, but we also have Jim Ryan playing with his cats. <laughs> He's yeah. not paying attention. <laughs> he, and he's thinking about buying a dog. And we need to respect yeah. Jim Ryan's yeah. decision on uh. maybe buying a dog or maybe just a Shih Tzu. Who knows? Maybe nothing at all. Maybe another cat. <laughs> moron. All right. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> that means. <laughs> Um, yeah they they need to do a better job yeah there, there's no other answer to it i i don't know if it's i don't know if it's their job to like see what everyone's talking about and then change action i feel like they need to have focus groups before they put it into action i here's the thing it's so it's it's really difficult to bring out a new service and as clumsily i feel like as this has been rolled out mm -hmm. um to have people answer quick questions sounds easier said than done especially as things get added um uh, but i i do think there needs to be clarification on yeah. hey this is what the service is now it's it's again like when you have this you know they're charging people extra supposedly in asia that's a lot of work to go to the asian team right and go hey y'all um, here's my interpreter, Tom. Uh, I know you, you got, I know it's one o'clock in the morning for you guys, but let's get some quick, uh, quick, uh, you know, clarification on it. Doesn't work like that. So there is some type of time lapse in between. I bet this was an urgent thing that they needed to fix ASAP. Oh, yeah. But yeah. again, like probably everybody in like the Hong Kong office was a snoozing because it's yeah. like 2 a.m. over there. So that's, that's the difficulties in messaging that I feel like. We, as consumers, even myself, who gets a little heated in the moment and writes a little hot tweet, um, kind of forget from time to time. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. said, uh, Fuji writes in, and she writes, I'm having a tough time trying to explain to my friends and family what PlayStation Plus is about, especially now with the new tiers that are being rolled out. What would you explain the new tier system on PlayStation Plus to someone who is new to the subscription service? Great question. So instantly, yeah. I don't know if it's a one to one comparison. I think of it as like Hulu free and Hulu without ads. Right. But instead of ads, you're getting bonus games. Yep. And... I think that's pretty much it. I feel like that's the one of the easiest comparisons, though not yeah. accurate because you know sure. But like it's the closest thing to get people to understand. Because mm -hmm. like to me, it's like it's like healthcare. You know, you got your gold, silver, and platinum plans, but then it's like, oh wait, you're guess in Europe. What? They all suck. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they all suck, and they only cover maybe a little. It's like that's not a, a great analogy. It is a weird sell, but I think just by trial error and you know marketing of this service they're going to get that messaging down but to yeah. me I, I would just explain it like playstation plus you get you know online gaming you get discounts and you get two free games every every month with playstation plus extra you get a whole collection of games plus all the stuff with the essential and with the premium version you get classic games and streaming games on mobile that's what I would. Uh, that's what I would try to sell people. But also, I'm not here to sell it to them. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Sony's. God, you just you just walking that out. 
It's a lot. With words? Why did they not go with the trophy naming system? I know. It's so dumb. Again, right there. Right. <laughs> it's right there. It's like the it's like the always sunny meme where Mac is handing uh Dennis the pa- the plate of mac and cheese like here and mac just or dennis just takes it and then throws it across the room it's like no we're gonna do something dumb (laughs) instead it doesn't make much sense but again i'm really happy that they corrected course here they clarified things because oftentimes translating any language is difficult when it's translating to english so you know some people could have been reading it wrong or translating it wrong oftentimes google translate isn't the best so Awesome that they we got some clarification here. And it got me to look at when my subscriptions are ending. Yep. I thought I had multiple years of PS Plus. Uh-oh. I only have until next year. Uh-oh. So eh, it's whatever. <laughs> the more important one is was PlayStation Now, which I only had until next year anyway. Yeah. But hey. that directly ties over to premium, right? Yeah, if you have both, it, it's there's weird math that you have to do in your head. Yeah. Again, it's kind of like healthcare. It doesn't really make sense. You feel no. like you may be getting something out of it. But yeah, you feel like you're making a good decision. And you should feel good about it. But then you get a bill two months later. Yeah, that's you're like, like, I thought you were supposed to cover this. Come on, man. Why are you charging me per tissue out, I use? Out of network coverage. That's how you know we're in our 30s. Kyle? My, oh, real quick, my dad had cataract surgery on Monday. He's fine. He's totally Humble fine. brag. Uh, he, they gave him cookies and a small thing of orange juice afterwards. How much was it? I guarantee you it's going to be on the bill. Oh, absolutely. It's probably like $30 per <laughs> yeah. cookie, a $50 tiny glass of orange OJ. Yeah. I'm very excited and to it's see like, what it's like, charging. It's, it's like... Hydrox, it's not even Oreos. Yeah, no. <laughs> I think there are Lorna Lorna Dorns, Lorna Dunes. Yeah. Cookies. Mm-mm. They're like fancy. What's that? What's that? The fancier Keebler cookies? Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's the down nabby of, of cookies. <laughs> it's just Keebler elves with British accents. <laughs> <laughs> We're about to make some fun of cookies, you see. <laughs> British people, folks, I don't know why you listen to us. I apologize so much. Oh, this just in. Trophy room banned from the UK charts. (laughs) Fair enough, Boris. Fair enough. (laughs) Kyle, it's time to get hyped, though. Man, there's so much news. This might be the biggest episode we've done. Let's take it away. Jeff Keighley has some stuff he has to get off his chest. Andy Robinson over at VGC writes, Jeff Keighley says to expect fewer third-party showcases this summer. Last year, companies such as Capcom and Square Enix received a somewhat negative critical response to their own digital events, which fans felt contained fewer announcements than anticipated. Speaking during a Twitter Spaces audio session this weekend, Keeley said consumers should expect less third-party conferences this year, as those publishers with less content instead opt to participate in Summer Game Fest and quote-unquote first-party conferences such as Xbox and Bethesda Showcase. Quote, there were a lot of shows last year where everyone was disappointed when they weren't really press conferences, right? Like Take Two, Capcom, Square Enix, and things like that, he said. I think they have learned that if you're going to do a press conference, you kind of need to have 30 minutes plus of stuff. And sometimes they only have one or two great games to show, which may not be enough to do a full event around. Keely added, so I think that's going to be a bit of a shift. I have a pretty good sense of what's coming in the next month, and I think people will be hyped about games in general. There is still a lack of games coming out right now. This kind of is the COVID gap year, I think. With a lot of games being delayed because they were started during the pandemic, we're still hoping for a lot of things to come out. As previously announced, Summer Game Fest will kick off with a live cross-industry showcase on Thursday, June 9th at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Ooh, we Kyle, this is actually really fantastic news because, I mean, the past, what, two years have been a whole bunch of companies coming out thinking they got a lot to say and it's not a whole lot. And so mm-hmm. seeing the industry finally get around to, OK, listen, we're square. People only care about Final Fantasy 16. Let's just put it in a Jeff Keighley showcase and maybe let's work something out with PlayStation to get this, uh, uh, you know, a deep dive gameplay reveal after the show type of call to action. 
whatever that that may be. Um, it's going to be cheaper for them to do rather than host their own event. You're going to get fans that are finally maybe having their expectations in check uh, mm-hmm. about these events and having, I think, less burnout, I feel, Kyle, about these yeah. events. Because how many times we go in thinking the world and it's just oh, another Ubisoft event after the EA play. I don't know. Do you yeah. share the same uh, same thoughts? I mean, I'm a rare person. I love every single one of them. I, I enjoy them same. no matter what. Because uh, they're usually tied with, you know, sitting down with you or sitting down with my friends to be excited about new video games being shown off. Um, so, yeah, it's a little bit of a bummer that we're not getting a whole lot of them. Mm-hmm. But I just feel like the quality of what we will get is going to be so much higher. Yes. Like, I, I, I know at least on the indie front, um, there is a Saturday. I think it's sad the 9th mm. or the 8th. Um, there's, like, four indie showcases on that Saturday, back to back to back to back. Okay. Um, so the, there, there's there's still going to be that stuff. But where the bigger things, I think, are going to be contained in what I feel was traditional E3. You yeah. get, like, the three main shows, and, and we kind of live with it. I do have a bone to pick with Keely though. Oh, okay. Middle of the day on a Thursday. What are you nuts? Yeah. How dare you, sir? Oh yeah. I'm now not going to be able to live react to that show because I'll be at work. Yeah, that sucks. How dare you, sir? Why can't you have it at five or six? Right? Like I get it. Pacific time. That's where all the games are. You? No, I don't like, get it. No, the West Coast gets too much like credit for stuff. Yeah, you know, like, East Coast it, exists too. I, I've had you enough can of put it. it at two p.m. Pacific. Yeah, and let us East Coasters get at least a five p.m. to yeah. live react to it. Yeah, fair enough. I don't know. It's a bummer. Yeah, it, yeah, it is a bummer. It's probably because yeah, there, he's probably working off of. You know, probably yeah. in California, so he's, yeah, he is probably working on developer time, which a lot of the studios are there. So, yeah, it it does make so sense, but do it. Expect me to turn my phone off on June 9th. Fair enough, because <laughs> I I want to I want to be completely surprised. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That said, here's here's a question from N Josh who writes, "Hey guys, for the N. summer Johnson. Oh, N Johnson. What did I say?" Josh. Oh, I thought I was thinking a good friend N64 Josh. And yeah. Johnson writes, hey guys, for Summer's Games Fest, do you think Nintendo, PlayStation, or Xbox will skip out and do their own showcases? Nintendo has been on top of doing their own. Xbox has theirs for June. Outside of doing some filler info and updates for some games, I don't see a lot of titles being added to the showcase. What do you guys think? I definitely think you're getting a Nintendo showcase in June. Absolutely. Um, I, I I love like people like I have insiders telling me all sorts of things for the PlayStation showcase. It's like, <laughs> I, I don't know. Here's the thing. I'm going to be flat out honest. All right. I have no confidence. I have no gusto that we're going to see crazy things for PlayStation in the summer. I honest to goodness, guys, you know, we've been covering PlayStation for a bit now. I don't know what they're doing this year. They, they've they been silent since March. We were getting so much news, and then afterwards, they're just like, and we're going to close the faucet. Get creative, yeah. podcasters. And it's led to this, like, inside sources are telling me. And it's like, no. If, it, if it's not from the sources that genuinely we get it from, you know what I mean? Like your your mm-hmm. Nibbles, your, your, your um, oh, my God, your Jeff Grubbs and, and folks like that. I genuinely take it with the, 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 the slightest pinch of salt because yeah. if that was the case you know Sony should have bought i don't know the whole country of japan by now um and yeah. it just hasn't happened so unfortunately i guess nonetheless i do think it is interesting though that keely references other first party conferences yeah and that's why there's th- only three of them you know so like i think it just opens the window for possibilities because yeah so here's what I think. Here's what I think. You're going to get a Nintendo one. That's where yeah. we're going to get Silk Song. And that's where it gets to be a day and date release. Oh, boy. Oh, All right. boy. And yeah. then Sean Capri can eat a big pile of <laughs> because our fancy critic just got <laughs> real and competitive. Mm-hmm. Um, I, so I think the Nintendo one is, is happening. It's, it'll be in June. 
I think if we're taking a look at what PlayStation has done in the past, they genuinely have a state of play every quarter. So Mm -hmm. if I am PlayStation, I am probably showing some things uh, at this showcase, kind of like they've done for the past, uh, you know, I think year, two years now, where they have a mini event in like June or or early July. Um, That's what I'm thinking. If God of War is coming out this year, that's where we see it. It has to. It has to. It has to. Because there's no way. I I truly think PlayStation's thing is in September. I don't know why they think that works for them, but it looks like, I mean, it does. They're so incredibly popular, but (laughs) September of all months. Anyway, nonetheless, I I think if God of War is coming out this year, it's a state of play revolving around that and some updates on like games like Final Fantasy 16 in the summer. But I don't think it's going to be a mega blowout like what Xbox or even Nintendo is planning. Mm. I think this is an event for their third party uh, folks uh, to to kind of for their marketing deals and and whatnot, if that makes any sense. uh, You're you're talking about Summer Game Fest. Yeah. So I do think something Sony will be there. And it's not in it's not in the show notes this week because I totally forgot about it. But right now, How dare but you. like Norman Reedus seemingly outed Death Stranding too. Yeah, that and, is true. And we all I know Kojima. Something in the notes, Kyle. We, we all know Kojima and 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 Jeff are yeah. are super yeah. tight buds. So like, I could totally see Sony having it there, yeah. unless you know, very weird twist. Death Stranding 2 is the Xbox exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, the Xbox fans, or Xbox, as they call them, will, like, pretend to love it. It's great. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. um, that game is great, you know? It's too much shade on something so Fantastic. beautiful. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think you're going to see something, like, PlayStation-related at Summer's game, uh, Summer Game Fest. I think, yeah, like, Death Stranding does kind of make a little bit of sense just because Kojima and... Uh, and Jeff are just best buds. Um, But I also think you'll get a little bit from everybody uh, in that event. And I think like, maybe we see a little bit of God of War and be like, and more info soon uh, or something like that. But again, if it's God of War, God of War can lead an event. Oh, absolutely. It It doesn't be, it can be the event. Yeah. Um, Was it last year? Two years ago, Ratchet was at summer game fest. Was it not? I think no, it was at um, or was that Gamescom? Gamescom, Gamescom, Gamescom. Okay, yeah. I take that back. So yeah, I think we're gonna get something in Gamescom. I don't think it's gonna like blow the roof off, but I think we're gonna get a little something there. I think we're gonna get a little PlayStation event. Don't think of it like the second coming, but it's not a showcase. Yeah, not not a showcase. Something right. mid tier. Now the Hobgoblin writes. We still don't know what Sony plans are for the remainder of the year, and speculation continues from quote-unquote insiders regarding games that p- could potentially come out. There are rumors of Ragnarok, Last of Us Remake, Final Fantasy 16, two first party and one third party uh, being those potential big ones, plus Forspoken. Do you feel like Sony needs, to, uh, needs all three out in quarter three or quarter four time frame, what with Microsoft currently having no big offerings, or could they afford to push into quarter one of 2023? And if so, which would you prefer they push? Great question, Hobgoblin. Oof. That is, that's a great question. That's a f- one, marry one, kill one type of <laughs> type of type of thing here. I think truthfully with Starfield and Redfall being, I know we talked a little bit about it last week, but with those games being delayed till God knows when PlayStation does have time to kind of think about what games they're putting out this holiday. And if God of War does need extra time, I feel like if they were confident in God of War's release date, I think they would have announced it by now, but I think they're learning lessons from horizon forbidden West and absolutely making sure that that game is done before they announce a release date. That's but fair, and I greatly it, appreciate that. Make it 11, 11, 11, or sorry, 11, 11, <laughs> uh, 22. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think they could take their, their time with, with, and not have everything in the quarter. Mm-hmm. But I also feel like no matter where they release it, they're going to be bought. 
people are going to buy those games. Yeah. So, like, to me, it doesn't matter where they put it. I'm going to buy mm-hmm. it. Um, but I, I selfishly, I would like more sooner than later. You know? Yes. I, I don't want to run into another February of this year. Because I'm, I'm still so far behind. <laughs> and it's May. It's months later. And that's the thing. It's like, if Starfield now comes out in March and, like, God of War is in February, it's like, oh, God, oh, so much geez. to play plus whatever in in the middle there comes out yeah like if like this you know the star wars fallen order thing happens or wh- yeah. whatever the Elden case Ring is. game of the year dlc who knows <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's called Elden bling it's awesome like all of that is <sighs> i don't want it to be one month again so to me i know there's rumors of like uh final fantasy 16 coming out this year and switching uh, with switching it with Forspoken, I don't believe that for a goddamn second. Mm-hmm. I I want Final Fantasy 16 to come out this year. I how, how can I say this nicely? All those games can't exist in the in the holiday launch. That is too perfect. I do think Last of Us remake comes out this year. I do think it comes out on like Outbreak Day. I'm calling it Outbreak Day, not Last of Us Day. Outbreak Day is cooler. Let's uh, let's embrace it. <laughs> All right. Uh, and I and I think if 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 Ragnarok is coming out this year, it's in November. But if they think that Harry Potter is coming out this year and that's going to be their big holiday thing, it, it'll it'll be Harry Potter there. Mm-hmm. And I think they'll wait. They'll hold on Ragnarok until it's absolutely ready. And I think they'll hold on Final Fantasy 16 until it's absolutely ready. Uh, question. Yes. Oh, you're looking something up. What's up? I am looking something up. Do we know who has the marketing to Gotham Knights? Uh, last time I checked, PlayStation. So PlayStation could also use that as like a holiday thing. Yeah. Like, hey, Gotham Knights, new Batman game on PlayStation, even though it's everywhere, kind of situation. Yeah. Do what they did with Call or have done with Call of Duty because yep. it. it- it, it works so again yeah. like you can still use that strategy this year and not have to put out god of war if you want god of war to win all the big accolades that that playstation usually has if when that they is, turn yeah, out those if games that is something that is of utmost importance and yeah you hold god of war until next year absolutely absolutely with that said i will be covering this event june 9th come to our stream we're gonna have fun you gotta love the way you look I guarantee it. Maybe I'll convince Joe to just wait for me after work, but that won't happen. There's no way. I I live in FOMO, <laughs> Kyle. There's no, I'm always connected to this. Oh, really? Device. You used to yell at me because I I. When it comes to FOMO. news, when it comes to yeah, I gotcha. I gotta I gotcha. live in the zeitgeist. You know me. Maybe you'll just do a, a second stream of just watching me watch the show. Oh, I think that'd be neat. Yeah. yeah. Alright. All right. I mean, right, hey, Kyle, this part right here. <laughs> hey, hey. Hey. Be the annoying person in the movie that's already seen it. Oh my god! Can't you just Tap your watch? Shoulder. Watch! What do you think I'm doing? I'm watching already. What are you- <laughs> Kyle, it's it's time. It's time to talk about God. There's so much news. PlayStation VR two. Yeah, we'll have over 20 launch games written by Andy Robinson over at VGC. Sony has said that it will have more than 20 games ready for the launch of PlayStation VR 2. The launch games will cover both first-party and third-party titles, the corporation said during a business briefing on Thursday. Quote, right now there's a considerable amount of money being spent on partnerships with independent and other third-party developers to secure a considerable pipeline of attractive VR content at the launch of PlayStation VR 2 said SIE President Jim Ryan. That energy, that effort, and that money will continue to grow as the install base of the PlayStation VR 2 headsets grow also. Wow. We. That's a lot of content. And I don't know if you just heard that motorcycle go by, but that's a lot of goddamn thing. Uh, (laughs) In the world I've ever heard. Um, 20 launch games. PSVR 2. Yeah. Yeah. When first party and third party, first party and third party launch window two can mean six months, but that's still a considerable amount of titles mm-hmm. for PlayStation VR. Mm-hmm. He's talking a lot about it, Kyle. Yep, but I do think at this point, this is a 2023 thing. 
I, uh, I, yes, I would agree with that. Okay. Okay. I could see it, and oh god, it bringing up such bad memories. Uh oh. I I could see it getting the Vita <gasps> slot. Well, Vita Not came that out. It's, uh, February. Oh, you think I it's believe. a February release? That could I make sense. I think it's in February. Yeah. Oh god, that worries me. <laughs> that worries me. A little me. bit. A little bit, but yeah. I can see it being a February thing. Yeah, and I think with so many people adopting VR, it's becoming more and more mainstream. I have faith that this there's gonna be a place for it, PlayStation VR too. That said, Spider CC eleven says for Summer Game Fest, I'm expecting Sony to give us uh, more info on PSVR two. Maybe downloadable content for PSVR games implemented in this year's tier. Ooh. Uh, in this year's tiers. Have a great show. I hope I'm not bringing down the show, but thoughts and prayers go back to all the families and friends of the tragedy in Uvalde, Texas. No, you did not, sir. Uh, not thank at you. all. Thank you. Again, thank you. our community's morning. Thank you for the kind words, good sir. Mm-hmm. Kyle. What I. Do you think? I think that would be really cool for them to come out on Summer Game Fest and be have that quote from Jim Ryan, that energy, that effort, and that money will continue to grow. And then splash screen, Half Life Alex. That's what I'm <laughs> doing. That, honestly, that's what I'm thinking. Half Life Alex is here. I mean, that that's PlayStation would win that show. Yeah. That would be huge. And I think it's huge. I think again, Steam does not care where they're putting their VR no. games, they want VR just to succeed. I think they're being a really good partner in that regards. Uh, there's been so many rumors, speculations about that. I want that so bad. It's so, so tempting. Bad. I have literally my Oculus right here, and I'm just like, I could. Oh, sorry, my Meta Quest. Um, I, <laughs> stupid goddamn name, Zuckerberg. Oh, you're gonna sink your whole company. I'm gonna laugh anyway. <laughs> Uh, but like, I, I am so tempted to hook this thing up to the computer and play Half-Life Alex. but I'm like, it's not going to be as great. It's not, the fidelity's not going to be there. It's going to be the PAL version of, uh, of Alex. I want the real deal. You <laughs> yeah. Know? So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really ex- 20 games is a lot. a lot. Um, so I'm really excited for the future of PS. Let me see what PS. The original PSVR had. I mean, it launched with a considerable amount of games. It didn't launch anywhere near 20, but I would like to say around like 10, maybe 11, 12. Um, I know the biggest one was Batman VR. You had rigs. Um, so here, here's what the, the launch lineup was for PSVR 1. Go for it. 100-foot yeah. robot golf. Hell yes. Ace Banana, which is a VR game I've never heard of. But I will now play. <laughs> Bit, uh, Batman Arkham VR. Yeah. Battle Zone. Okay. Bound. Okay. Drive Club VR. Okay. Eve Gunjack. Eve Valkyrie. That, that made Har- me sick. Harmonix Music VR. Mm-hmm. Hatsune Miku Project Diva X. Oh, Christ. Headmaster, which is a great VR game. Here They Lie. Hustle Kings VR. Job Simulator. Excellent VR game. Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. Excellent VR game. Loading Human, Super Stardust, Delta VR, PlayStation VR Worlds, Res Infinite, Rigs. Oh god! Okay, so Rigs. they had about twenty games. Rise of Tomb Raider had had a, a thing in there. Nah, Super Hypercube. Real talk, I don't count it. So okay, are they? They're just counting like, oh, it has a VR mode. Until Dawn, Rush of Blood. That was great. That's a great VR game. Make it. Make yeah. a sequel for PSVR two yeah. for the love of God. Yeah. So yeah, they they had a decent amount. All right. All right. So hopefully we get like Moss Book Two, we get Alex, we get that Horizon Call of Call of the Mountains. Yeah, you know, like we get some cool stuff here. But that's awesome. Twenty games, that's a lineup. I'm excited. That said, Kyle, PSVR two, so far away. I can't, I can't touch it. I can't see it. I can't. Why? Why do I care? You know, what I do care about is some flash news. This week's flash news. Gotta go fast. Gotta run. Oh shit. Oh fuck. It's right behind me. Uh, (laughs) This week's flash news is all the breaking news that Kyle literally scooped up right before the show because they were having a a shareholders meeting. And uh, there's a, there's a lot of numbers, a lot of cool news out here, Kyle. Interesting things. Tidbits. Let's call it the PlayStation tidbits. tidbits. You know, it's flash news today. So let's take Uh, it away. 
Yeah, so I just grabbed some tweets because that was the easiest place to grab them. Absolutely. Uh, from our good friend Benji Sales on Twitter. Uh, official PlayStation PC sales numbers revealed by Sony. Horizon Zero Dawn sold 2.39 million units, mm. 60 million in revenue. Jesus. Days Gone sold 852,000, which equals $22.7 million in revenue. And God of War sold 971,000, which equals $26.2 million in revenue. Sony is forecasting huge PC growth for the next, next fiscal, fiscal year. year. All right, so that's where we're going to get. PlayStation on PC is not going anywhere it's, anytime soon. It's not, and rumor has it, Kyle. It's something that we've talked about in the past. Strange how the things we talk about in the past don't get picked right? up. You know, yeah. it's like we need Ed Freeze or Fries or whatever, whoever Luke just interviewed on our show, you know, to get some traction, <laughs> get some get some pick up here. But we said this. They're making their own PlayStation app on PC. It is happening. You're going to see a whole lot of interconnectivity between ecosystem, which excite me because I genuinely think the PlayStation app is better than the Xbox one. I'll just say it. I think it's a fantastic oh. app. It's yeah. it's wonderful. And so they hopefully have the same engineers working on that, maybe on the PC version. I think they really want to unite this ecosystem. I think they want their own dashboard, something that connects people where they're, they're on their PlayStation 5, they jump to their MacBook or whatever, their Steam Deck. Mm-hmm. All hail, all hail. The Vita <laughs> 3 lives. Um, Ken, uh, let me ask exciting. you a quick question. Yeah. Which one of these numbers surprises you the most out of those three? God of War. Yeah, that literally right? came out months ago. It's o- almost already at a million. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. That's bonkers. And then to see that, what, in the next two weeks, we're going to get Uncharted on PC. Again, like Returnal has been leaked, mm-hmm. rumored to be mm-hmm. on PC. Demon Souls possibly coming to PC in the future as well if the NVIDIA leaks, which have a great track record, prove out to be yeah. right. Yeah, they're they're... They're not holding back anymore. And no. I like that they're not, honestly. Because, again, more people getting to play PlayStation games are great. And more profits of that PlayStation doesn't have to put endless amount of microtransactions in their games. I am mm-hmm. all welcomed. I don't care. Yeah. I want my PlayStation games to remain. Go Absolutely. Tier. So, yeah. um, the, next, uh, the next slide, I guess, from this, this conference. Exhibit B. Has- uh, Sony illustrates PlayStation 5 high demand levels. This is actually insane to me. Oh, yeah? In the United States, PlayStation 5 is selling 80,000 units in 82 minutes when available, compared to PlayStation 4 selling 80,000 <laughs> units in nine days at the same stage in their life cycle. Yeah. So down to the minute, PS5 is selling nearly 1,000 units per minute, while PS4 only sold six per minute. Obviously, they got to have them in stores and yeah. being available to buy. Yeah, but a thousand units per minute for PS Five—that's pretty, that's pretty cool. W- yeah, that's that's one way to spin that you're not selling yeah. as many PS Fours. That's it's real talk. Scalpers. It, well, and that's that's bots. Um, because like in, in actuality, I love when they're like, "When available?" <laughs> yeah. <it's> like, <laughs> Of course, because like it, these things sell out in minutes, so you're going to be able to calculate and really, you know, fudge the numbers up a bit there. Because I don't, mm. I, I, that is outrageous. That's like PlayStation Five is taking over the world, Skynet style. Yeah, yeah. Right? So that to me, this is a bit of a, a, a fluff okay. piece on their part. But well, how, still how cool. about this next one from Benji? All right. Sony is heavily increasing their investment into their first party studios, creating new IP games in the coming years. In 2019, they um, invested 77% into existing IP, 23% new IP. This year, 2022, they are investing 66% in existing IP and 34% in new IP. And they are projecting by the 2025 to do an even 50-50 split between existing and new IP. That has me. In- that was the news where I was like, Kyle, you see this? You're like, I've seen. I've oh, yeah. been seeing this. This is awesome because like to me, Kyle, I'm genuinely very excited here. To me. The fear was PlayStation was going to rest on their laurels. You're going to get uh-huh. Horizon sequel, Uncharted sequel, you know, uh, God for of the War rest sequel. of eternity. For the rest of eternity, you know, as much as I love, you know, Ghost of Tsushima, you're going to get a Ghost sequel, Last of Us. So 
for them to say, no, 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 by, you know, three years from now, we're expecting new IP and the IP, existing IP, to be equal uh, uh, yeah. output that we're we're putting out there. That's awesome. That's literally still them ha- keeping that same energy that made them so popular in the PlayStation 4 era of, hey, experiment, do something weird. And then at the same exact time, you have these IP that people already love So and, and being put out there. So it's awesome to see that they're going to, you know, possibly Insomniac going, hey, listen, Spider-Man's cool. Keep making them, but go make some weird multiplayer IP. That's probably yeah. Uh, I mean, it, that's how we got Horizon. Yes. So like, and look where we are now. It's the biggest thing on PlayStation. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that that's the thing that has me so excited. Again, you're not seeing PlayStation rest on the laurels. You're seeing them. If you're going all the way back previous to this episode fixing the mistakes that they that they've made clerical errors whatever Mm -hmm. they're being proactive they don't want to quote unquote lose this race and they are fighting fighting to keep this momentum going for them because they understand that their competitors hungry for market share they know that they have lost a bit and they're going to do what it takes to make sure that they keep the momentum so that is probably the most exciting thing that I've seen here for sure. Yeah. And the fact that like the investment, the investment, this means, yes, we're going to get more acquisitions, but we're going to see them toss money at studios, second party and Mm -hmm. make something special. And I think that is the other thing that excites me so much here. Yeah. Tying this to, I believe it was a new story. I think almost exactly a year ago, because I think I talked about it on my episode of PS I Love You, mm-hmm. that humble brag. Yeah, uh, you know, a, a little bit of a reflection is fine. You know, <laughs> uh, that I think half of all like upcoming PlayStation Five exclusives are new IP, yeah. like already at this stage. Yeah. So like it's it's already happening before our eyes, and that's super super exciting. Yeah. Um, the next bit of uh, flash little conference news. We're going to jump over to a friend of the show, Jonathan Dornbush from okay. Podcast Beyond. Uh, yeah. Jonathan uh, tweeted out one other interesting tidbit to PlayStation's plans for more live service games. They intend to have three this fiscal year. One is MLB The Show. For the others, and this is Jonathan talking, I assume one is Naughty Dog's Factions 2 multiplayer game. Any guesses for the other one could be one of a few things. So we have one, and will be the show 22. According to Sony, there's going to be three this year. Shit. What are those other two? And obviously, Factions has got to be the other one. Yeah, so Factions factions is the other one. (sighs) I'm trying to think of what studio isn't busy right now that we saw a while ago. I mean. We haven't seen in a minute. Go for it. Firewalk, whatever they're working on, is that one of the live service games? Right, because they're just like, and it's not, it's not Destiny, like it's not, yeah. So, which is crazy, <laughs> yeah, you exactly. That loud, that's becoming reality. What is the next unannounced multiplayer? Do you think it's the Twisted Metal? But no, I think that would have to co- co- coincide with the show. With the t- yeah, again, synergy. It's it's got to be something that it's maybe it's Jade Raymond's game's too far off. No, so way too mind. far I off. Said Firewalk I, makes it's sense. It's got to be Firewalk. It has to be. I the, can't think of anything else. They've been working on it since 2018. You'd think prototype yeah. type stages 2019. Yeah. I, that makes sense. And if it's holiday, it has to. Which again, if that is one of them, there's got to be a showcase or state of play something. Yeah, you're right. you you can't you can't have something in. Let's say we don't even get that showcase you're talking about in September. You can't have like a state of play in October and announce a brand new thing. Yeah, for what the remaining two months of the year? That's not happening. Uh, what if it's Insomniac again? <laughs> it's on me. You know it's what? like Fair. this isn't even hard. They're like we could do this all day. <laughs> like, yeah, that'd be that'd be crazy. Um, also to point out on this yeah, same slide. It. They have a single player game catalog. They have Ragnarok, Horizon, Ratchet and Clank, Spider Man, Miles Morales, Last of Us Part Two, Returnal, Ghost of Tsushima, Death Stranding, and Uncharted. It's still in there. Yeah. Just saying. 
more Uncharted, baby. Oh, keep them coming. I don't have any problem with that whatsoever. I'm still happy. I, I think Firewalk's probably the best bet. Bend could maybe, uh, but here's the other one. Here's here's the here's the slinger. Okay, uh huh. Slinging back and forth here. Okay, Gorilla. They have another team. Mm. They've been working on a game. Rumor has it SOCOM. Now here's the thing. If um yeah, I think I think it's SOCOM. If that's the if that's the the, but do you want to launch a SOCOM game next to a Call of Duty? Yeah. I don't think you do. I don't know. Uh, so, like, that's it. I mean, you don't want to launch a shooter in front of that thing or whatever. That's that's worrisome. Yeah. So, and, and if you still have the, the, the marketing rights still to Call of Duty, I don't think you want to do that. So, I don't think, yeah. I don't think it's a shooter. So, maybe Twisted Metal does line up. Who knows? That'd be pretty wild. That'd be pretty wild. That'd be pretty wild. Now, the last one, Joe, okay. on here. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. A game that you were super excited about when we first saw it. I believe it was at Game Awards. Yes. Or or Summer Game Fest. Yeah. Callisto Protocol from the the a lot of the Dead Space devs. Yep. Are, are making this. Original this is the one that is in uh, the PUBG universe somehow. Um, find out how but they they they're in game informer they have new screenshots okay i didn't share them with you because i wanted you to live react to them okay they're pretty freaking gorgeous oh and the details coming in second half of this year mm-hmm. crushed and confirmed jacob the main character can be used for crowd control abilities to push and pull things towards you includes both range combat and melee and enemies are called biophages this game looks really cool. Gotta take a the look at it. Screenshots are awesome. Oh, absolutely. Okay, let, me, let me see. Okay. Clicking on the tab. Holy shit. I know you love I know you love Dead Space. Yes. This is, this oh is Dead my Space. god, there's so many faces on this one face. Yeah, there is. Oh my god. Okay, so pretty much, guys, let me let me this one clip. We got big big head mouth. But like there's no jaw because underneath the jaw is another face. And Think then of a deep head on a controller, but then instead of the buttons, there's a there's a head, a skull in each yeah. direction. And they're all joined at the mouth. Fucking nightmare fuel. This is great. Okay. <laughs> oh wow, okay. We got some legit gameplay from it. Um he kind of looks like a mixture of like uh the advanced warfare guys a little bit. I Listen was thinking the, the Vanquish character from Vanquish. Ooh, you know that game? Yeah, yeah, dude. I 100% the <laughs> Vanquish, yeah. Yeah. Uh, th- these look reminiscent. To, not like reminiscent, like, oh my god, like you don't know hooks. But like, I could definitely see that this would be a spiritual successor to Dead Space mm-hmm. uh, from that one screenshot. Because you got this one guy, instead of like, again, this, they like faces. Two, It's like two faces, but they're conjoined. Um like merged into the eyeballs with no jaw. So again, they have something with jaws. They don't like them. Creepy. Love it. You get this cool space Vista. Holy shit. Looks like you're on a, one of the moons on, on Jupiter, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So maybe this is Titan. You're seeing the space space. Sweet. And is, is there more? Oh shit. There yeah, is more. Okay. Two cool, cool. uh, below. Yep. Okay. Holy shit. So now, Oh my God. He's like in a snowy tundra part of this move oh my oh my god and he, they're frozen these necromorph looking neophages what are they called biophages biophages okay not a fan of the name but you know one of them's <laughs> gonna be like it's gonna un, unstuck like, oh, he's, like absolutely he's gonna, like You're t2 gonna hear situation cracking. yep mm-hmm. yeah this is a terminator 2 situation this is gonna be creepy i don't like it and then yeah more melee combat so yeah there is a really big emphasis and it seems like that this is very much like you're a military dude. Like you, you have this weird baton that you're you're cracking heads with. So you're probably. Well, if I remember correctly, the debut trailer. Were you, did you not wake up like in a jail cell? So like that's a prisoner. Yeah, I think you're probably like maybe you're a prisoner. You got like the uniform or a guard, a gu- or a guard. You know, yeah. yeah. And then um, that last screenshot, straight out of control. Yeah, a whole bunch of people just hanging. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Game looks pretty cool. Um, honestly, yeah, 
I'm I'm digging what I'm seeing here. It's freaky. It's weird. It's only horror I like, which is alien because you, you or alien esque horror because you know that shit's not real and they're not gonna really eat you. But who knows? Because now UFOs are sort of real. So holy shit! Still, actually, now even more terrifying. Who knows? Yeah, they could be walking amongst us. Yeah, you know. Nice. <sighs> All right. So that was Kyle bringing the flash news. We went fast. We went fast. Kyle, have you seen this? Have you heard about this? PlayStation Days of Play 2022 sale includes Lego Star Wars, Ghostwire Tokyo, and more. Uh, there's a whole list of a whole bunch of games that are on sale lot. currently. I know one of the biggest highlights is that Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is 40 bucks. So Ooh. for whatever reason, you did not finish. Or I'm sorry, you did not touch Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. First off, how dare you? Now there's no excuse. Go ahead and buy it. But there's literally over 100 games here. Uh, and I know there's probably more in the store. Uh, so I'm going to definitely check it out after the show and probably snag me something. And with that, Stingray writes in. Are you expecting to purchase anything from the annual Days of Play sale? Now, I know alongside all the cool gadgets and gizmos and games that you you get, there's also like controllers and I believe side panels as well are on sale. It's not the steepest sale. Like the headset's only like $10 off and the controllers are $10 off, but there is a lot here to check a look at. So I am i don't know if I'm expecting to purchase anything. I just know that like if Assassin's Creed Origins is on sale, I'm going I'm to snag it for sure. Like I, I, I'm looking at it right now. Like Dying Light Two is forty eight. I I skipped out on that earlier. Yeah. That might be one. Ghostwire Tokyo is fifty percent off. It's thirty bucks. Oh, that's oh, that's a yeah. For thirty uh, bucks, you're not going wrong yeah. there. For thirty bucks, Ollie Ollie wrong. Worlds, you're saving like six seven bucks. Please play that game. That yeah. game's great. Yeah, there's some really good deals. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Famous Seamus says, what are your highlights on the sale? Which controllers would you buy? Um, real talk, I'm really annoyed because my sky blue one, and I'm reaching to get Uh-oh. it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Joe broke another one. I didn't break another one. But look, <laughs> here, do you hear the sound. Oh, yeah. It's crunchy. It's stiff. Why is it crunchy? It's stiff. I don't know, but I need to call for a replacement. Or I can go to a GameStop, get it, you know, put it back. In. Oh, no, no, no. What's that yeah. like? I don't have one near me anymore. Um, you know, inconvenient. They try to sell you know. cards. Dying slowly. It's a little That's depressing fair. now that you mention it. Uh, anything <laughs> that 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 speaks out or, or you know. I mean, yeah, the ones I highlighted before are pretty cool, but uh, I'm still going through it. Like, RE Village is 50% off, 30 bucks. I mean, game. one of your games of the year last year, Hitman 3, is 55% off, $27. Oh, go okay. get Hitman The entire 3. trilogy is also 55% off for $45. Dude, real t- yeah. go, 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 go support that team. They're so fucking good. Yes. I'm sorry, Gus. Yes, go. Oh, go for it. FF7 Remake is $30. Okay. It- Integrate on PS5 is $40. Integrate, you say? Integrate. Kena <laughs> is $26. It's 35% off. Okay. There's some. Oh, Tony Hawk, twenty bucks. Now Come I'm turning on, now. on my PlayStation Five just to take a look at like the Come sales on, now. Are on, you know, the store. Yeah. Because I really see. Here's the thing: Assassin's Creed Origins got a 60 FPS patch. I don't know why, but I'm itching to go back. Maybe it's Moon Knight that's making me go back to the Egyptian setting. But I'm gonna give that game a go again. But I'm not buying it at like full price. That'd be ridiculous. Yeah. To be fair. I would not buy anything Ubisoft because are they not included in the PS Plus thing? Ooh, you're right. I'm just, I'm just saying you're the right. Ubisoft, whatever, whatever they're streaming. Ubisoft thing Plus is. comes to PlayStation yeah. with their classics. You're right. I, I just, gotta take a look at that. Good on you, Kyle. Good on you. Yeah, yeah. Because real talk, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say it. Odyssey, one of my favorite open world games. There. I Odyssey? said what I said. Yeah, Odyssey. It's fantastic. And Cassandra can kick me straight in the chest. Matthew Kennedy rides in. <laughs> what a segue. Uh, Hello, all. Matthew Kennedy here from the Star. Uh, hey. I have an overwhelming backlog of video games that keep growing. A wise Same. person would probably stop buying so many. But why the heck would I do that with the right. new Days 
of play sale. Do either of you have any great recommendations? Again, Ratchet and Clank. I mean, Kyle just riddled them off. Hitman. Go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> go. I don't know. I don't care who you are. Go. Um, if if somehow yeah. you missed claiming a Plague Tale Innocence on PS Plus, yes. that game is currently 75% off for $10. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It takes two. Fantastic. Uh, let's see. Let's see. What else? What else? Let me see. Uh, Doom, five bucks. Ooh. Yeah, there's a lot here. This is this is some. This is some it's great, a very good sale. This is These sales stuff. are usually pretty great. Yeah. Oh my God, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, the next level edition, as well as on sale. So yeah, there's a lot of games that you should be trying. Out and uh, sure. of course, I'm gonna I'm gonna shill for MLB the Show. That's also on sale. <laughs> How many hours do you think you've put into MLB the Show thus far? Uh, probably seventy five, eighty. Oh jeez. If I'm if I'm on the conservative side, sure, sure. Well, Kyle, with that said, that's been the days of play sale. I'm excited. In the beginning, I was like, oh, this is kind of a little underwhelming, but you know what? I'm gonna be real. Now looking over again, this is Ooh, this is some swinger True content. Colors, thirty <gasps> bucks. Get that for thirty bucks, Kyle. Have, do yeah. you have that? I do not yet. Go get it. Go get it right now. Mm-hmm. All right, Kyle, are you holding on to something? Yes. Prepare the drop. Here are the latest deals and deals headed to the PlayStation storefront. This week, May the 23rd. Injection. Weird symbol, 23 R's. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know how to read that. <laughs> I tried. I'm PS4. I'm May 24th. Dungeon Defenders Awakened. Kruger. Oh, boy. Uh, on uh, PS5 and <laughs> PS4. Uh, MX vs. ATV Legends. Who do you think wins in a fight? A- a- MX or an ATV? Prison rules. Uh, ATV. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, May 25th. Uh-oh. Blow and fry. Oh, my goodness. That sounds uh, like me? something Luke's mom and I did last night. Oh. Uh, PS4. Roller Champions. Sounds like a banger of a game. <laughs> it's a banger of a time. You know, me, and, me and Luke's mom know all too well. Uh, Roller Champions on PlayStation 4. That's the Ubisoft game. You've seen this? Have you heard about this? Oh, yeah. It's finally yeah. out. It's finally out. It's a, a sleeper like it, out of nowhere. So I don't know if it's going to be any good. May 26. Arcade Archives of Plotting. Uh-oh. A PS4. Uh, what are the arcade? Like, are they uh, arcade like plotting their revenge? <laughs> <laughs> this is what you get for taking the quarters away from us. Uh, <laughs> Sniper Elite 5, which I'm hearing nothing but great things about, comes to PlayStation 5 and PS4. And then May 27th, Arcade Spirits, the new challengers on PlayStation 5 and PS4. Uh, Kau the Kangaroo on PlayStation 5, PS4. Yeah. Funny Old enough. Old school platformer. Um, looks kind of good. When I, when I worked in games PR, everybody was like, can I, re- I'm requesting Kau the Kangaroo. I'm ca- uh, constantly, I'm like, we don't cover this game. <laughs> Who who told you we did stop? <laughs> but it looks cool. A um, Moonlander, <clears throat> which let me tell you, uh, one of the highlights of E3 last year, just because they had their shit together on the Moonlander? E3 press press site. Yeah, it was an actual thing you could check out. Moonlander is an action adventure RPG with Metroidvania elements, featuring an epic story about cows and milk. Jesus Christ. First it was the Crab Souls, and now we got Moonlander. Yeah, yo, that that Crab game. I'm all about it. I'm all about it too. That's a sad thing. My, you know what I'm all about too. My Little Pony, a mare time. Adventure. Oh God! How depressed was that person writing the title? Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. He's like, this is <laughs> this is my magnum opus. I will never get better than Mayor Time. <laughs> oh God! Uh, packed Pac Man Museum Plus. How many Pac Mans are we gonna put in these goddamn museums? Can no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I don't know if it's real, but is Pac Man coming to Fortnite? I would. Be I surprised. thought I saw an image of Pac Man coming to Fortnite. Kyle, Kyle, hold the goddamn phone. Babylon's fall. I could I could host a show and look and try to purchase things at the same time. Babylon's Fall, thirty five percent off. Get it for thirty eight dollars. I I don't know if you have to. Oh uh, no, I don't think so either. All right, uh, Remote Life. 
on PS5, PS4. I could tell you, it's not what it seems. It's real sad, depressing. <laughs> and that has been the games that have been out this week. So go check out a few. I would seriously, I would think about ooh, the Arkham collections on here for eight sure. bucks. You're kidding me. You're kidding. They're me. also, I think, on the PS Plus catalog. They're All classic right. games, I think. At least in Asia, they are. Okay. Okay. Same. All right, enough of that. I'm being distracted. I got the show. I got the show. I got to think about it. Right. I'm currently <clears throat> looking at the My Little Pony game. <laughs> Why? I don't know. You you want to stream it next week? <laughs> no. <laughs> Kyle, it's the la- it's our last but favorite segment of the show. It's time for the Sony Pony Express. Yeah. 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 Miss that guy. All right, M9 Prime writes in off topic question for the pod. M9, I got you. Recently, having platinum returnal, yes, after bouncing off of it early and coming back when with the free DLC dropped and everyone was talking about it. Are there any games that you thought you were done playing and for some reason went back to and enjoyed them way more than you thought was possible? And also, what made you go back to these games? Great question. I don't have like a definitive answer, but like one oh. one would be a good one is Assassin's Creed Odyssey, where I played it once, didn't get into it, then played it like years after and loved it. I'm like, why didn't I love this before? <laughs> you know, um, another one I've been playing Cyberpunk, which Patreon oh. exclusive show Road to Greatness. We're going to be talking Ooh. about that. Um, so I'm going to reserve my thoughts, but bronze okay. members get a sneak peek of what I got thoughts on cyberpunk. Um, yeah. So, so my, those are games, I think mine's an easy one. Go for it. And, and one that's going to make you proud. It's bloodborne. Fuck yes. It's one that I, I tried because it was a PlayStation exclusive. I wanted to, to hear or, or or experience what all the hype was at when it yeah. first came out not having played any souls game ever and i hated every second i was like this game's too hard i don't understand why people enjoy it and then when i decided to secretly platinum and 100 the game that's right behind your back i did it in 60 hours uh, i fell in love with it that game is special that game is awesome i'm happy i i i did that because now yes. it's awakened a whole new thing. Like, I platinum Elden Ring for Christ's sake. Hell yes. <laughs> I still have That's a game I need to go back to you. Now that I, uh, humble brag, have some more, a little bit more free time, uh, I'll be definitely going back to you. All right. Next question. Oh, boy. Awesome Dave writes, I just wanted to jump in and say that's a banger thing that some of these classics are getting trophies. About. Yes. Dave, Thanks, how do, Dave, how do you keep sneaking on in here? I'm, I did throw one in there just in case Dave didn't show up this week, which is totally fine. But I gotta, I gotta keep the beggar life going. You know what I mean? Nerf Legends, get it for fourteen bucks. <gasps> and what else? What else? I mean, let me, let me. I just, know I'm still looking through the sale as well as we go through. There's just so much. There's literally again. There's j- a lot. Just it's typical PlayStation. We got. 40 games on this list. There's like 800 games actually yeah. in the store for sale. Um, all right, I'm putting, I'm putting, I'm putting the controller away. All right, I'm not the, um, oh my God. Dark pictures games are also on super on sale as well. Uh, I don't know. I wasn't that much in love with them. Uh, Yuna writes in. Okay. So real talk, Kyle, I did not screen Yuna's question. Oh, it could have been, it could be very inappropriate. It could be, Riddled with cusses and obscenities. I don't think you know would do that to I us. Know, but again, like if you're famous, Seamus, and you know, you just get a pass because the questions are always so great. Hey, guys. I hope you guys are having a good day. I've been still digging at Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Now, alongside other games, because I'm inconsistent. <laughs> That's all I, mean, I do so much. I am on Mass Effect 3 now and, and so hoping to get it done by hopefully next week. My question, why is, is, is it you doing like summer classes, Yuna? 
remember school comes first my question this week is what games have you gone and thought the higher difficulty of this game and shined some light on how i see this game oh as i'm playing mass effect i'm doing them on the harder difficulties because i have played these games before and i always think these games feel good playing on harder difficulties for these types of games now it has just been enhanced the or sorry it has just enhanced the experience for these games so guys i throw the ball to you what games are harder difficulties that changed the game experience for you easy go for it there's two immediately broken record here final fantasy 7 remake playing that on hard for the platinum that game is one of the most rewarding experiences and that why that platinum is one of my most favorite ones that i have Mm -hmm. just because of how intense the hard mode is where you can't use items at all and that's super tough when it comes to using magic and materia and no way to replenish MP other than sitting at a bench and restoring them. Um, That's too hard. <laughs> inc- including the like summons uh, battle where you have to fight them all in a row. Uh, Forget about in- it. Absolutely insane. That was Forget awesome. But I think the one that actually makes the base game better if you play it on the hardest difficulty, mm. if you want to be fully immersed, if you want to fully feel like the characters in that game, go play Last of Us Ungrounded and then come back to me. That That is the truest version of that game wow. of searching through the drawers and and playing it on lower difficulty. Yeah, there'll be some some stuff there for you to craft with. But on Grounded, you find barely anything, which I feel is how it would realistically be. Yeah. And you have to be smart with your shots and plan everything out. I it And that was intense. Super difficult, but that made me uh, love the base game even more, playing it on that hardest, which is why I want to go back to part two and play it on Grounded. Yeah. Uh, for me, I mean long time halo fan you see that you see that up there you see this yeah see this i see that GameStop poster yeah 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 yeah. humble brag humble brag i (laughs) i begged them to take it i was like can i have this please and they're like please don't and i ripped it off the wall i ran um (laughs) playing those games on legendary with my brother when i was a kid that's it that's the definitive halo experience um playing it on co-op playing it on legendary having just a blast uh other games i'm with yuna here um mass effect feels way more tactical and way more serious um, when you're playing it on a harder difficulty. And then for me, and I know this is going to sound weird, but because it's how many console, you know, uh, RTSs are there, but when you're playing civilization for me, I slowly up the ante from easy, easy, medium, hard, then difficult and then like i'm actually fighting the reincarnated version of gandhi at one point so like all that stuff um that's that's how i typically it does change the experience now there are some games that it's too easy on normal but then you switch to hard and you're like what the hell and look at you kana <laughs> exactly look at you kana <laughs> Um, or even like Sifu is a great example. Sifu, yeah. Sifu way too hard on on their noble difficulty, but on their new easy version, I don't die. So it's like, oh, okay. Like I still need that challenge. It's just I think mm-hmm. it is the mechanics of that game that don't end up jiving with me. You know. So yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Fantastic yeah. question as always. Fantastic question. And Kyle, that's been this week's trophy room really quickly yeah. guardians of the galaxy 50 percent off on the sale 35 but, bucks but that's on the new playstation plus oh, extra fair this is the deluxe edition though get some cool I mean, costumes you gotta, yeah i mean you get a costume oh my god speaking of which that new thor trailer i didn't watch it yet you know what that oh save that for <laughs> the road to greatness because you need to watch it okay all right okay actually you know what we'll do you'll watch it and then we'll immediately react to it, and because there's some okay. there's some things we need to talk about in the road to greatness, we can kind of make yes. it two shows in one. So okay. that said, that has been 
this week's episode of the trophy room love y'all appreciate y'all so very much and uh kyle is there anything you'd like to spotlight before we get on out of here uh other than uh, my usual plugs mr k step everywhere just hug your loved ones i love you very very much you mean a whole lot to me and uh be kind to everybody. Be generous. Be just be there for them. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I love you. Absolutely. Be the change you want to see in the world, everyone. You can find me over at PS Trophy Room on oh, sorry, you can find the show over at PS Trophy Room on Twitter. You can find me over at Mr. Babbit on Twitter. You can find this show on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, wherever you get your podcast a service of choice, we're on there. And if we're not, I got to go fight a Jeff Bezos of some sort. So you let me know at Mr. Babbitt and I will change that. I will fix that for you. Please rate us five stars. It really does help us out. It's the reason why we get up there on uh, all those lists and categories and whatnot. It's because of those ratings. It it helps us grow. So it really does mean a lot if you guys could go over there uh, and uh, give us a five star rating. And so with all that said, with all that out of the way, everybody, keep your wits about you. Keep hunting and keep playing PlayStation. See you guys. Bye.